I'm always so bad about knowing when to start. Me too. I, I'm like shocked and nervous. Hi Hello, guys. everyone. And see now the circle of hell is still moving. Oh uh, my gosh. Hi everybody. Welcome to Winning Wednesday. I'm so happy to welcome you um, with one of our final Winning Wednesdays for the year. We're closing yeah. this year out very closely, which has been great. Very exciting. <sighs> But I'm joined today with Gabriella, my magnificent co-host, to tell you where we're going to Dynamic be. Dynamic duo here, people. Yes. <laughs> However, we are here today to tell you where we will be going for the next year, as well as where we're going to be going for today. Yes. And so today's program is actually very culminated into what we want to see going into the future. Yes. Um, because these are things that we've noticed um, with our clients, with other people's clients, with people who just show up in court. So we thought today we would do a program about things that you might know if you're just going to show up in court. Absolutely. Uh, because, you know, maybe one of the things that you might deal with as well as I in our practice is that sometimes people don't know how to show up to court the same way that we do. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and, and things that we think are... And it are, hurts their, their case, whatever their case may be, whether it's a divorce, a criminal defense case, a PFA, you just never know um, what... People are watching you do and how it will impact their perception of you. So. Yes. Um, and that's that's one of the biggest things because, you know, sometimes as attorneys, we lose sight of the fact, you know, we we appear in court every single day. It's actually become something that's so mundane to us that we don't even think about it. Right. But every so often, you know, you have a client who calls and asks you the question, you know, right, Gabriella, what do I wear to court? Oh my gosh, yes. And and there's so many things that we can go through and things that even if you decide not to hire a lawyer, I promise you today's program will help you. But, but before we start today, I actually want to give a shout out to my fabulous friend, Brandon, and our amazing managing partner, Tom, who this last weekend uh, worked and coached K-State's mock trial team and did some really amazing work with their young people. You guys I do not understand how hard these guys work and in a volunteer position. And so how did your kids do? Tell us. I know you are so proud of them. So they tell did us a little bit about them. Yeah, they did extraordinarily well. Um, we had a couple kids bring home some awards. Um, awesome. Tom and I, Tom and I consider it just... A really great privilege to be able to work with these kids and one of the great things about them is they also teach us how we're going to do the next level of practice uh, the younger generation always informs how we kind of function in our world oh absolutely absolutely so as much as we teach we learn absolutely <laughs> so. now the the team that you guys are the teams that you guys coached it was a mock trial program and it the competition was uh, through UMKC, Correct. but, and, and this is why this is important, because this is something that we'll talk about in this program. Uh, they are now delving into the world of Zoom programs for co trial competitions, which is actually how trials and how hearings are being done for us as lawyers too, so. That's, um, and know. that's actually, that's actually a great segue into what we're talking about today because I do want to give some of the knowledge that I've learned from coaching as well as Absolutely. like seeing these young people doing these trials in this arena. Because we as lawyers, you know, we've transitioned, you know, how do I do this job online? Oh, but there's gosh, another yes. question that you should ask yourself, which is how do we do this job well um, online? Yes, right? Yes. Um, and, and, and frankly, like coaching the kids has been the most introductory course into how to just elevate your practice into you know adding a little presentation adding you know something that carries all the way through your case right absolutely most absolutely. attorneys right now are just thinking about how they're going to save themselves but i think that right now we can also see this as an opportunity about how we're going to do better in the world going forward absolutely a massive learning opportunity for sure um, so, well, let's get started yes. on our conversation, and then you can tell us about some of the things that your kids did when we get to our Zoom section of this program, right? Um, and so that we can talk about how we how we do this do this job not only um, well and successfully, but uh, in a way that also helps inform the general public, which is what our hope is today. 
Well, and so I guess the first question that I would ask you is, Gabriella, if you were preparing for a trial, if you're preparing for a hearing in one of your family law cases, what's the first piece of advice you would give somebody? For instance, if I was your client, I said, Gabriella, I want to give myself the best possible footing. I know that our case is great. I know that all the things that we're going to be arguing are great, but I also want to make sure that I appear great in court. Mm -hmm. And, and frankly, like in your cases, right, I might actually be called to testify. Yes. So I need to be talked through that as well. Absolutely. Because in my case, I might not, I might you, not you, have that. Well, not only might you not have that, but you have a right not to be compelled to, to right. testify in some of your cases. So honestly, the first thing I think that um, as lawyers, we often don't tell our clients are some basics, right? In terms of... Uh, clothing in terms of, of uh, standing you know what do you do well you know I have often had clients that'll say well you know do I need to buy it go buy a, a suit so that I can go to my divorce here no if, if you're not the kind of person that wears a suit on a daily um, you do not have to make that kind of financial investment in it um, but it is important of course to wear clean nice looking clothes if you have a nice pair of khakis where you're Wear your khakis. Um, if you have, if if all you have are jeans, okay, then wear your jeans. Now, with jeans, don't wear holy jeans. Don't right. wear jeans that um, may show part, you know, a little cheek here, a little cheek there, <laughs> right. or or that are um, torn all the way from the knee all the way up to the, the top of the thigh. Right. Um, those are not great clothing for court, but just a pair, standard pair of jeans. They don't have to be your your luckies. They don't have to be fancy jeans, but just something that's clean and that is not filled with holes is going to be perfect. I always tell people this. This is not a. I'm not endorsing any kind of religion in any way by making this statement. But generally, what I tell my clients is Sunday best. Right? Absolutely. If you if you can wear it into a church. You can wear it into a courtroom. I will always be dressed in a full suit if we are appearing in court together, but but that is not your dictate. Right, right. and and for us, it's not that we're um, trying to uh, dress nicer than you. Uh, as officers of the court, uh, we actually do have that obligation. You know, um, a, a, a gentleman lawyer who goes into court without a tie or without his jacket <laughs> is going to get a, more likely than not going to get a prompt. Uh, talk as RuPaul by a would say, we would get red to fill. <laughs> yes, we would, right? Uh, and, and so that kind of thing you don't want to do. Um, women, we of course have the benefit of having a little bit more relaxed clothing because we don't have to wear ties. Uh, though I think a woman in a suit with a tie, <laughs> uh, the right look could be. Pants suit nation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but. We also can't be wearing leggings to court, right? So if you if you think you're if you see a lawyer that's wearing leggings to court, do not emulate them because that's the wrong kind of message, right? Um, as as lawyers, we always have um, obligations to uh, follow dress codes, and sometimes um, for us, we actually have um, still uh, for women we have requirement for wearing hosiery in the winter. The judges do require us to wear hosiery. They don't want to see our hairy ass, uh, pale legs. I guess <laughs> um, they don't want. Oh, mama! <laughs> they don't want to see us in uh, cork shoes, like cork bottom shoes, um, that type of thing. Um, so I would suggest maybe um, try to steer away from anything that's too trendy, and definitely um, for my ladies, um, as beautiful as your bodies are. Um, showing a little bit of midriff, a little bit too much chest is just not going to compel a judge at all to do anything for you. It's going to be the strength of your case. End of story. So. Yeah, I, I always tell people if I'm ever asking myself about my clothing, about what I'm going to be wearing to court, I always ask myself this one question. Is this piece of clothing going to be giving more or less respect to the court? Absolutely. And if the question is, or if the answer is more, then we can add it on. But if the answer is less, then it's probably best left at home for that for day. For sure, for <laughs> sure. So okay. Yeah, that's, that being that's said, great. the the next thing that I want to ask you about is the degree to which I enter court, right? Because for some extent, I might be entering court all by myself, 
Right. Um, I don't have a lawyer hired yet, and, and I still need something from this place, Absolutely. right? So if you could give me one piece of advice about when I do go to court by myself, on the first, you know, first appearance before I start talking to a lawyer, how should I appear? Maybe what are some of the things I should do? And and I have some things that I want to add to this Absolutely. too, but I want to ask you first. Oh goodness! So um, some of the things that I think are relevant, um, you know, and and I will have cases. Sorry, I'm my. I had an eyebrow itch, and that was not the wrong, right way to go about it. it I have a gray like... eyebrow, if you haven't all noticed. It's actually the first one I've had. Oh, goodness. I'm in quiet a tizzy. you old, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes I'll do cases where there is an opposing uh, party that is pro se. That happens a lot in my family law cases. Um, that happens a lot for me in PFA and PFS cases. And what I would recommend to you... Uh, my dear listeners who are who are uh, wondering because they're about to go into the first hearing by themselves is uh, first of all, of course, beyond the um, appearance is be respectful. You will never do wrong if you're just a little bit more respectful, a little bit more polite. Now that doesn't mean walk, let people walk all over you. If if your, your court case is called, you stand up, you go to the um, where you're supposed to, most often you do get treated to the um, privilege of uh, sitting be uh, past the bar, right? right. Um, and but while you're there, um, these are important things. Do not be um, giving face <laughs> about what's going on, right? Yes. Um, do not roll your eyes. Do not raise your eyebrows, even if the other person is saying something ludicrous. Um, do not do anything that will make the judge see you in a bad light. Yes. Um, because the judge it doesn't know you, and they don't know that your ex is crazy. But um, when you start rolling your eyes and sucking your teeth, the judge starts to think, oh, no, you're the irrational one. Right. So um, politeness will always serve you well in this world, and especially before a tribunal. That actually brings me to a great piece of advice that I generally give to clients. Yes, what's up? Do you know the difference between lions and zebras? Um, Scientifically? No. So lions will go after either the most healthy zebra or the sickest one because they've made themselves a target by either being at the front or the back of the pack. Okay. Right? Uh-huh. What I would challenge you to be is the middle zebra. Mm, Do not what? allow anybody to... The reason why zebras survive is because they adapt and they blend with their characteristics. Do not stick out. Do not be the one in the front of the back. Don't be the one who is going to speak up today in district court. I promise somebody's done it before you, and they probably are going to end up in the same place you're about to. Right. Right? And, and also, don't be the one who fails to do what you're supposed to. Don't show up wearing your pajamas you know, not knowing what's going on in court. There is a happy medium, which is, you know, Your Honor, I've already talked to an attorney. I'm looking at hiring somebody. I want to do something with this case. You want to show them that forward movement is happening in the case. Absolutely. Um, and that you are not holding them back, right? But at the end of the day, you also do not want to be the kind of person who's like, I'll accept anything that happens just so long as this goes away. Right. right. No, and and that's generally why we talk to attorneys. Absolutely. So. And, and you don't have to do that. Um, because the reality is that you do have a right to stand up for yourself. And so, um, but with it, when you are in front of a judge, standing up for yourself means um, show, showcasing your rights with dignity. Yes. And, and instead of interrupting the other <laughs> person, oh, this is an important thing. Sometimes... We think that... Uh, Especially on Zoom. Yes. Now. Interrupting is, is going to mean that the judge is going to listen to you because they've got you've got something to say. In fact, uh, it, that's the furthest thing from the truth. When you interrupt, a judge will instantly get annoyed because they're supposed to listen to everything. And so you wait until that judge tells you, um, okay, now what is your allegations as to how do you respond to those allegations or what are your allegations about this case? Um, Court is a place of respect, and even if you feel like something disrespectful is going on, court is always a place of respect, and never forget it. And the moment that you do forget it, there will be 
two other people at least who will remind you and one of them has the power to really hurt you. So um, never forget that one very simple rule. Absolutely. I, I was actually just before a judge yesterday and, and the, one of the things that he, that this judge is always, I mean, I've heard him say this at any like new, we're, we start a new hearing, now this wasn't a new hearing, but we're starting a new case. One of the first things he tells my clients is, in my courtroom, I expect you to act like ladies and gentlemen. And so it is an important piece to that. And frankly, like it's the most important piece to our judicial system. I hate to be the guy who has an unpopular opinion here, but having civility towards other parties, no matter what we're fighting about, is probably one of the most important functions of democratic society. Absolutely. So don't forget it. Your judge isn't going to forget it. And if you don't forget it, then they'll treat you with respect because you acknowledge it. Absolutely. Right? So that being said, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you was about specifically clothing. Because you had, you had mentioned like the cork bottom shoes and yep, certain yep. other kinds of policies because these are things actually like I've never heard of because as you can see, my um, appropriate dress for court is rather easy, right? Absolutely. Shirt, tie, uh, pants, shoes. Yep. Uh, boys don't really have a lot of adventure here. No. This isn't the Met Gala. <laughs> uh, so, so tell me how ladies dress for court. Um, ladies dress for court with um, appropriate clothing that doesn't, uh, excuse me, showcase any of the goodies. <laughs> um, <laughs> ladies do not wear very short skirts to court. So this isn't an MTV Music video. <laughs> no, uh, this isn't the MTV Music Awards. You will not um, get. Uh, benefits for being showy in your clothing. Uh, if you know, I often wear dresses. I often wear pants, um, skirts. Anything goes for women as long as it doesn't look like uh, something you'd sleep in, something you'd wear on a lazy Saturday, and it, or something that you're going to the clubs in. Um, Brandon, can I, I? Yeah, no, I want you to yeah. ask me, but I was going to say that actually brought me up a, a, an interesting question is because like you actually wear some of the most varied um, clothing that I see of a female in the legal perspective. Really? Okay. Dresses, cool. skirts, yeah, yeah. like you, you really try the whole thing. Yeah. Have you ever been called down for anything you've worn? Um, early in my career, I um, would wear wrap shirts and unfortunately um, you have to know your body type mm -hmm. and um, although a wrap shirt a ballet ballerina shirt may look fine on some people on somebody like me who's a little bit uh, more top heavy um, that is a shirt that may reveal too much and so um, I was um, told by another uh, female lawyer hey you probably shouldn't wear those you should wear make sure that you wear shell tops that are uh, circle necks um, because a v-neck on you doesn't look the same as a v-neck on someone else. Right. Um, so that that was a good learning experience for figuring out, oh, I never thought about that. And please, and please do not think that any of the things that we're saying are going to mean the beginning and end of your case. Absolutely right? not. These, no, are, no. these are us telling you, if I want to put the finishing polishes on how I'm going to appear, how I'm going to look. You know, I'm an anxious person. I just want to make sure I do everything perfect. Yeah. This advice matters to you because, you know, I guess what you wear to court does matter. For, for a long time, I was very much concerned with the way that I appeared in court. But after a long time of practicing in this court and getting to know everybody, I realized that it's not all about that. However, the way that I respect the court always matters because um, I will work with them for the rest of my life. Absolutely. So. Something that we were, we were just talking about actually being in front of, of court and um, if you're up against a lawyer. Right. Something that I think we as lawyers often forget to tell people. Um, if you are representing yourself pro se in a, in a case or even if you've got a lawyer and uh, you are now, for example, on the witness stand. Something that, it, it, again, so automatic to me, but I know that sometimes people don't know these things. Um, pay attention to what's going on. Yes. If you, even if you're like on the witness stand and you're testifying or you're at your chair, you're pro se in a PFA case and you're testifying, 
The minute there are certain things that um, should be indicative to you. The minute you hear the word objection, uh, for example, that, that is a legal procedure, immediately be quiet uh, because uh, the court is about to make a specific ruling on a uh, procedural matter and the judge wants to be able to focus exactly on that. Um, the yes. Others, right? That's a very quick way to be called down. Um, yes. If you speak over an objection, that is, that's akin to speaking over the judge. And, and they don't generally respect that behavior. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The other thing that's beneficial is just learning not to start talking while somebody else is talking. And um, sometimes it's not that the judge is frustrated with you, but we also always need to be considerate of the other people in the courtroom. And one of the important people in a courtroom is the transcriber. Um, a person who is transcribing has to basically uh, be writing verbatim. They are writing the script of your legal process. And so they're going to put uh, attorney blah, 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 you know, and then they start typing what you said, and then um, witness, blah, blah, blah. But if you have two people talking at the same time, they just do not have the capacity, as, even though they are incredible typists. I mean, I've never seen people type as fast as court as You've never people. seen words per minute like this. No. <laughs> and they, it's shorthand. <laughs> so. But, it, but, it, but that's one way that you show respect to the court process yes. and to all of the individuals that work in the courthouse. And, and might I say something very controversial? Ooh, do tell. I like controversy. You should always show more respect for the courthouse staff than you do for a judge. The clerks, um, everybody else, the clerks, the judge's assistant, you should always show more respect for those people than you do for the judge themselves. Because if you would not say it to a judge's face, then you would not say it to their clerk's face. You would not say it to anybody else's face. And I promise you that if you do behave an ass, the judge will find out about it because he actually has probably lunch with his clerks, mm -hmm. right? Um, and everybody knows who you are if you behave an ass in court. Absolutely. Do not do that. The first piece of advice I can give you is always grit your teeth, bear it, and call an attorney so that you can talk to somebody about whether or not something that happened to you was logical or illogical, but don't you ever assume that you're the be-all, end-all in the district court, you know, the moment that it's happening. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, and you know, the it's interesting... So why don't treat your wait, your wait staff with disrespect? It's not their policy. Correct. They work at a restaurant, right? Correct. So. Well, and the other thing is, um, you know, the, the court staff people are the people that, that elevate the quality of the judges because they make the judges job look like all they're doing is sitting there and that's not true but their their staff does so much behind the scenes to get them to that point that more often than not judges have extreme love and uh compassion for their their uh uh staff you may think oh well this is just an hourly wage person no it's not that is a judge's family person you know, just like, like if, you know, you can, like, if you call my office and you're mean to me, I might take it for a little bit. But if my staff people tell me that you were mean to them, I'm attack you. Yeah, you're <laughs> not going to be a client of this firm. No, no. <laughs> Period. That's exactly right. And that's our policy. You do not get to act abusive towards our staff because those are the people that help us shine every single day, that make our jobs look easy, that make sure that things get filed where they're supposed to that make sure that our files have all the information we need and have gathered the evidence and done a million things that I would not have been able to do for you without your bill running into the tens of thousands. Right. And frankly, the court staff does it for a lot less money. Absolutely. So it is not their problem. They are not trying to hurt your feelings. Um, I think that the, if you feel like you aren't able to get somewhere in the court system, the quickest piece of advice I would give you is just call an attorney who practices in that area um, because they'll be able to tell you very quickly whether or not that's normal or abnormal Absolutely. for practice. And, and then you don't ever have to deal with uh, the possibility of hurting somebody's feelings and potentially hurting your own case. Right. Right. The other important thing to know about uh, court staff is that 
their job is to be very neutral. Their job is to respect both you and your opposing party, be it your ex-husband, your, uh, your son's father or mother, or the prosecutor who's got the DUI against you. That means that, they, that they're not trying to be evasive when they tell you, I'm sorry, I can't give you legal advice. Right. Not only one, uh, do they not have the right to do that because that's considered unauthorized practice of the law. Number two, they must have that appearance of, of propriety to show that a courthouse is a place where all of us can go uh, to get justice. So uh, don't think that because they, they won't tell you what peti what paperwork to file for the, your divorce that they're being mean to you. Right. Um, you know, they're, they really are trying to do their best to ensure that the integrity of neutrality in our court system is maintained. So. I actually love the degree of our program today because for the most part I feel like our overarching theme has been been kind. Be kind to court staff. Be kind to yes. people. Like, here's the thing: we deal with cases that would rock your world, right? Like, there's tons of things to lose. There's tons of people's benefits at stake. Um, but one thing that we've always prided ourselves on a firm is like we're not ever going to degrade ourselves to the place where we're going to start talking bad about you and worse off. Like where we're going to start attacking court staff or mm -hmm. the court itself because. Frankly, it's our job as lawyers to bring causes before the court and for the court to hear them. Absolutely. And so just remember that that's always the, the, the method that you should look at your case through because nobody's trying to hurt your feelings. It's just that sometimes it's just not going to be landing on the right ears. Absolutely. Right? Now, Brandon, um, since you have had <laughs> so much experience with this and because um, this uh, truly feels like the way that the world is moving. I want yeah. you to give us some hints and thoughts about um, <clears throat> the differences between Zoom court and uh, actually appearing in the courthouse. Uh, can I, um, you know, you have a lot of Zoom hearings. Can I have a, a beer or a cigarette while I'm appearing via Zoom? I mean, I know I can't do that in yeah. the courthouse, and I know I wouldn't do that. That'd be ridiculous. But you know, I'm, I'm nervous. I just, I just want to have a drink of my, my beer or, or a, a drag of my cigarette. How do, girl, what do you think about that? Girl, I totally get it. And actually, in fact, I have been in, gosh, this is like, this is going to sound very white trash of me, but I've been in about 20 hearings at least where somebody has lit up a cigarette oh, in no. the middle of court. Gotcha. gotcha. Y'all... I don't want to be the first person to say this to you. Do not ever, ever light up a cigarette during court. If Whether you're on Zoom nope. or God forbid you're in the room, that's the thing that actually shocks me most about it, right? Because we are supposed to be behaving as if we were in this room, right? Absolutely. It's why I wear uh, a, a suit. And, you know, sometimes I'll wear jeans instead of suit pants, you know, right. because they don't, they don't see us on the bottom half. But that being said, there's a difference between informality and disrespect. Absolutely. Right? Smoking, drinking. Um, I guess what I would mean to say is rather than telling you the things that you shouldn't do, let me tell you this. If you were appearing on Zoom for court, um, for a docket or anything... What I would recommend is that you find a wall very much just like this. Like what Gabrielle and I have, this is very blank. It's very bland. There's no, we don't have any like caustic things on the back of it. All you see is us right. and all you see is our appearance, right? You can do this in your home, but remember that your background also will speak volumes about you, Absolutely. right? So make sure we're not seeing your dirty, uncleaned house, um, especially if this is a case where we're making allegations about, you know, certain things that could have to do with that, right? right? Yeah, family law cases, right? I, yes. Here I am saying that I should be the uh, uh, primary residential parent and, and there's chaos behind me. Right. Uh, the court's going to say, are you kidding me? I'm about to start a child in need of care case against <laughs> exactly. you. Exactly, exactly. Um, also, right now, um, what do you recommend in terms of like noise levels? If if, if I live yes. with roommates, how do I how do I still appear in Zoom and make sure I'm in a quiet room setting? Or will it be bad if I wear earbuds and no. plug them in? Tell no. me, what do I do there? Yeah, those are all incredible questions. So number one, I'm an attorney. I wear a full headset, 
if I'm actually working in my home office, which is my most comfortable place to do Zoom for, I'm a gamer in real life. So I have a very functional headset with a great microphone, great lighting. I have a great setup at home. I, in fact, prefer that for a trial as opposed to being here. Right. Now, that being said, you might not have that. So like, I actually do want to give you a little bit of piece of advice is about things that could help you in the meantime. If you're appearing on Zoom, lighting can be an important issue for Gabriella and I in this program. Absolutely. Um, and so what do we use? We use a $15 um, Walmart desk lamp um, that actually shines like some light on us. and <laughs> Directly in and, our faces. And it actually helps so that way in when we are asking for testimony, you can see our facial expressions, you can see the questions that we ask. Absolutely. We also try to make sure that we're using a good microphone. We're not in a room that has a lot of muffled sound. Because if we're asking a question of a client or of a witness, we want to make sure that it's audible because like Gabriella said before, this is a court of record. And just because we're doing it on Zoom doesn't mean there's not a record. And in fact, because we are doing it on Zoom, it probably means that we need to be more careful about how we speak to make sure that the court reporter can hear us. Absolutely. So just so just a couple things that I've noticed from Zoom, you know, make sure that your appearance is correct. Just because you're at your house doesn't mean that you're wearing pajamas. And just because, you know, you have an iPhone 12 doesn't mean you have the best lighting and the best audio quality. Absolutely. Don't shoot this in your in your closet. dark closet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, appear in a place where you think it's appropriate for you to appear. Yeah. If you're worried about that absolutely and I imagine I mean because I know you have kitties right so what do you do when you have pets I have puppies <laughs> what, what do we how do we manage um, pets and, and uh, children when we got zoom court well I will tell you that each and every one of my girls has made an appearance on an official court <laughs> docket of this year unintentionally uh, but that being said, um, generally what we'd like to do is we try in our office, we just try and close it down to any animals. Right. My fiance, he works from home most of the time, so they, they generally get the run of the whole mill. So that's that being said, if you have pets, if you have a dog, uh, it's anything that's going to bark, meow, uh, chirp, cause an, a disturbance to your court appearance, Go ahead and just lock yourself in a room, right? It's just like ch ch children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get away from them, and the only time that I ever have peace is when I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but don't do your Zoom court in the bathroom, uh, because you... just don't do them both at the same time. You can do it in the bathroom. Just make sure you're not doing anything else. Um, do you ever. have? <laughs> do you have? Any... Well, yes. <laughs> and sometimes people do, right? <laughs> Uh, do you Again, think, smoking cigarettes. Right, like, we right. didn't think that we needed to say this stuff, but right. we're saying it. Do you have any opinion, one way or the other, about um, Zoom electronic backgrounds? I do. Okay, what is and that? And I guess uh, it's, a, it's a varied opinion, right? Mm -hmm. When I'm coaching my kids, I tell them that a, a, a continuity background between attorneys and counsel can show that we're actually connected and together in our case. Right. But if I have a witness and this is exactly what I'm going to say to you all pretty much for the most part, because that's what's going to apply to you all. If I've got a witness, what I'm looking at is also with their background. I'm also looking about what they're going to say to me, but you can also help yourself, Absolutely. right? You can help yourself by making sure that you're in a very appropriate place that has things in the background that kind of match the case that you're putting forward, Absolutely. Uh, that help your theme, right? I'm not a bad person. I run a daycare. There could be a set of blocks behind me. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Court, the first half of court, your direct examination half is always theater. And the second half, the cross-examination half is always a bloodbath. And so you have to remember, you have to prepare yourself for the theater, despite the fact that you know that there's other portion of trial going on. And that being said, like if you are going to be called to testify, just most importantly, put yourself in a comfortable place where you can speak clearly, where we can hear you clearly, where your lighting is good, where we can see your face. And, um, and I don't think you'll really ever have any problems because frankly, for the most part, everyone else is going to be having way more problems than you. Be the zebra. Be the middle zebra, right? Right, right. right. So. Well, and, it, it, and one thing that you said that was just uh, 
great. You know, the background, know your case, right? Yes. It, so that makes perfect sense to me because while it may be fun with my friends, if I have a like uh, Cheech and Chong uh, automatic background, exactly. uh, I definitely don't want to have that prejudicing my judge. Well, maybe not prejudice, but informing his opinion of who I am, right? Without question. Um, Image matters all the time. It, it absolutely does. So, yeah. Um, Anybody just, who tells you that, just, they're just lying to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, 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 I think that makes sense because the reality is that um, the information that you provide, both uh, verbal information and visual, is going to make a huge, yes. huge impact. Something. And this Thank actually, you. this actually gets to the part where you're asking me about, you know, like maybe I have kind of a cluttered house. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm homeschooling my kids during COVID and I don't have time to clean up the playroom. And that's the only quiet place I can find right now. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I might recommend to you? Use of a Zoom background. Absolutely. Right. And in that case, you know, put a couple bookshelves up behind you and sure, will it look a little bit weird because we can tell you have a Zoom background? Absolutely. But you know what we can't tell that you have? A, a mess on your hands, <laughs> a mess on your hands, Absolutely. right? So just hide it from us. And for the most part, unless you inform everybody else that something's going wrong, nobody else will take a second look at it. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So that, that actually matters. That matters for Zoom, especially for all of you people who are showing up for court and you've got kids at home and like you got a driving wall suspended time. or something yeah. like that. Like just don't hurt yourself. Just know that like this is completely accomplishable. We just, there are better ways of doing it, Absolutely. right? So, Absolutely. okay. I am so glad we did this program today. I think that this type of information is really important to provide to people. Yeah. Now, um, while it does seem like second nature to us because we do appear in courts all the time, all the time uh, it doesn't for most people. And, and it is helpful to uh, keep reminding people that uh, putting their best foot forward will be the key will be one of the keys to their own success even if that success means hey your honor I'm not ready to proceed and I was hoping that I could get a lawyer appointed to me um, yes is it's gonna be fine and the judge is gonna uh, see that you care about it you want to be fast about it and that you're not trying to distract from the issue at hand so. that is if the one thing that I can say to you is this, as an advocate, as somebody who has studied the way that I talk, the way that I speak, the way that I behave in order to get other people what they want throughout my entire life, the one thing that I will always tell you that has benefited me hand over fist is give respect to people all the time. If they don't deserve your respect, give them respect because you will never get the sun to move, you know, by telling it that it's wrong. Absolutely. So the best thing that you can do is just say, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yep. you for your help. And then just move on to the next person who can try and give you some more. But you will never, ever succeed by hurting another person's feelings. And unfortunately, the court has very sensitive feelings when it comes <laughs> to appearance, the way that you present yourself. I mean, we, the, the system of our courts come from a very long time ago, long well traditions. before I existed. Absolutely, and will continue long after we're gone. Yeah, so, so I'll be damned so, if I'm a spit in their face. Yeah, so Bill, understand that and uh, respect their traditions and they they will give you the respect that you need as well. And, and if you feel like you're not getting your respect, and if you have given respect and you just feel like you need some other questions asked, or frankly, you just feel like you need some questions asked, well, what do we, we, do? Wanna, we wanna talk to you. Absolutely, so call 785-776-2000 because if somebody's not giving you the respect you deserve, we can help you with that. And obviously what we mean by that is somebody not listening to you about your, about your criminal defense issues, if somebody's not um, listening to you about the concerns that you have in your family, case and your parenting plan um, that's what lawyers do is we help you obtain the respect uh, from the court system that you are legally entitled to so and we'll, we want we'll you to be our, able to we'll make it through best. it and, and, and frankly like if you can't make it through it that's exactly why we exist so absolutely. we're here so let us know absolutely <laughs> but what other a, than that yay great other program that, great program i am so excited about uh, what's coming up next now I will tell you guys you know we've, uh, holiday season is upon us 
So um, and we, it's a special COVID holiday. And it's a special <laughs> COVID holiday. Does that mean a COVID edition of Bob Hope Special? I, no. <laughs> that's, I'm, like, I'm wondering if they're going to do that little like felt uh, Rudolph the Rand, R- Red Nosed Reindeer special, but mm-hmm. like with masks. With, with a little mask. I think, <laughs> I think um, it'd be so cute if we could see. Uh, Claymation Rudolph with a mask on because his little nose is so bright that it'll still shine. That's hope. Hope. <laughs> Shining through our masks. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hashtag happy holidays. Happy holidays, us. right. Um, so so we will have um, probably one, we, we, we think we're going to have one more program uh, between uh, after Thanksgiving but before Christmas. And I'm very excited about this program because this is always an important program for us. Yes, everybody, entrepreneurs, small business owners, um, those of you with a side hustle, you want to hear our uh, next program, which will not happen next week because next week, of course, is Thanksgiving. But after that, it will be Lisa Ward talking about year-end business planning. Important stuff here, people, helping you get your business straight so that you can go into the new year strong. And frankly, you probably need it this year more than any other year. We have got to get our business... I'm going to be just straight up with y'all. We have got to get our business shit handled before the end of this year because this year has been a total storm. (laughs) <laughs> right? Yes, right? Yes. So and, and we listen. want we want your your businesses to succeed. We want your businesses to continue and it's been so hard in this uh COVID crisis, but with a a little bit of uh attention to detail and some good advice from our very fabulous Lisa Ward, uh we do believe that we will at least help you get the tools that you need to try to get your business uh maintaining strong. Um and then we'll be gone for the and rest. We'll be gone. Yeah. And then January, we're gonna start. Do you want to talk about I, not all of the programs? Let's let's maybe give them a little a little bite. What do you okay. think you're gonna do for criminal defense in January? Well, I thought that I would go ahead and just hit the heavy, you know, pot and kettle, and uh-huh. I'm going straight up with felony murder. So felony if, murder. That's good. If you all want to just hit the ground running let's talk about murder cases yeah. uh at the beginning of january How does hell, that sound? Yeah. hell yeah and you know the thing <laughs> is that um you know I, so i imagine our, our listening public is probably like is there a difference between misdemeanor murder and felony murder well there's no such there's thing not as misdemeanor murder <laughs> yeah. it's still murder yeah felony but, murder but yeah, it's a special murder. thing yeah right and uh, it'll be an interesting uh, program. Maybe we'll have uh, a little um, game or two about what what you might do that will eventually uh, lead to a bad uh, call in this area. And then again, hitting it hard in January. Uh, one of the for me the the little nugget that I'm going to give is for family law. We're going to be talking about child relocation cases. Oh my Which gosh. are so heavy, we've been, so emotional, but we want to talk about this. We've been actually talking about reload cases for months. So I hope that if you forget every single thing that we said today and you hear that we're going to be doing reload cases in January, Absolutely. you tune in for January because yes. you need to know about reload cases. If you're from Fort Riley, you got to yep. hear this program. Yep. Frankly, if, if you're in, if you're you in, at know. KSU for a master's program and you happen to... Um, move here with your family, but now your family is breaking down. Yep. You want to talk. You want to hear this. It, it's going to be important planning information for you guys. So, uh, so glad, uh, so glad we could see you guys. This is uh, our first episode back for like almost a month. I think so. so. I think so. I think it was like you and Tom, and then I I did one alone, and then you. Uh, yeah, it's been busy, but that's okay. It's always better when nobody's, the dynamic duo is together. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Carly, you didn't even know who Carly Simon is, right? No. Carly uh-huh. Simon said something once, and she said <laughs> and this. And she said, uh, "No, she had a song called Nobody Does It Better." <laughs> Uh, I'll send it to you. It'll be fine. I'm going to learn a lot tonight <laughs> about music, I think. So I'm really appreciative that you all joined us today, and we hope to see you through the rest of the year. And, Absolutely. And, and we hope that you have a, a safe rest of your year, and we're going to be trying to take a little bit of time off with our families Absolutely. over the holidays. So yeah. we'll see you intermittently. Yep. And um, since we won't see you next week, happy Thanksgiving. Have a safe Thanksgiving. And... 
consider um, consider quarantining appropriately. I know that uh, what it's Pfizer. I know Pfizer's coming out with a, a and Moderna and Moderna. Some something is coming that will help us get back to normal. I believe it. And also consider um, during this hol holiday season um, contributing contributing to the. Uh, Flint Hills, Manhattan bread basket. Yes, yes, um, yes. They're Especially just, they're this are going to be people in need this year. And so, like, we have to talk about food scarcity. And so I would hope that the one thing that we could leave you with is that if you are a family who has a little bit more this year, go ahead and think about somebody who just doesn't have a can of beans or a can of corn or something like that. So Absolutely. Thank you we all love so you much. Guys. We love you very much. Bye. Have a